we are asked to solve two sine two x minus square root three equals zero from x equals zero to two pi radians. It is important to recognize this interval here is for the angle x, not the angle two x. So we know that x is greater than or equal to zero radians and less than two pi radians. Let's find the interval for the angle two x by multiplying everything by two. Well, two times zero is still zero. We have zero less than or equal to two times x is two x which is less than two times two pi, which is four pi. So when solving the equation for two x, we have to solve from zero to four pi radians. And because we have a double angle, we will also perform a substitution. We will let u equal two x. If u is equal to two x, we can write the original equation as two sine u minus square root three equals zero. And again, because u is equal to two x, we will have to solve this in terms of u from zero to four pi radians. We isolate sine u by adding square root three to both sides and then dividing by two, which gives us sine u equals positive square root three divided by two. On the unit circle, since sine theta equals y, we now find the point on the unit circle where the y coordinate is square root three divided by two, and then find the angles from zero to four pi radians. And we know y is positive in the first and second quadrants. So looking in the first quadrant, notice how this point on the unit circle has a y coordinate of square root three divided by two, which means any time an angle is in standard position and the terminal side is here, the sine function value is square root three divided by two. And we know the initial side is along the positive x-axis and therefore the first angle is this angle here, which is 60 degrees, or in radians, pi over three radians, or if we want one third pi radians. So let's first record u equals one third pi radians. But remember, we're solving from zero to four pi radians, so we can also make one additional rotation around the unit circle and find another angle that has this as its terminal side. The second angle with the terminal of side at this location from zero to four pi radians is this angle here, which would be one third pi radians plus two pi radians, and one third pi radians plus two pi radians is equal to one third pi radians plus six thirds pi radians, which equals seven thirds pi radians. Let's also record this angle. And now let's move to the second quadrant. In the second quadrant, notice how this point on the unit circle also has a y coordinate of positive square root three divided by two, which means any angle in standard position that has a terminal side here will have a sine function value of square root three divided by two. So the first angle is this angle here which is 120 degrees, or in radians, two-thirds pi radians. But again, because we are solving for u from zero to four pi radians, we can also make an additional rotation around the unit circle, a revolution around the unit circle, which would give us this angle here, which is two-thirds pi radians plus two pi radians, and two-thirds pi radians plus two pi radians is the same as plus six thirds pi radians, which gives us eight thirds pi radians. So we are done solving this in terms of u, but remember our goal here is to solve this for x, not u, and because u is equal to two x, we also know that two x can equal one third pi radians, seven thirds pi radians, two thirds pi radians, as well as eight thirds pi radians. And therefore, to solve for x, we need to divide all four angles by two, or multiply each of the angles by one half. Again, if u equals two x, if we divide both sides by two, we can say x equals u divided by two, or one half u. So now we need to find the solutions for x. Well, one half times one third pi is one sixth pi. One half times seven thirds pi is seven sixth pi and one half times two thirds pi is equal to one third pi. Let's go ahead and show that product. We have one half times two thirds pi. Before multiplying, notice how 
there's one, two, and two here and here, which does give us one third pi. And the last angle is one half times eight thirds pi. Let's show that one as well. One half times eight thirds pi. Notice the two and the eight simplify. There's one, two, and two, and four twos and eight, which gives us four thirds pi. So in solving using substitution, it is important that we come back and find the solutions in this case for x. And again, notice all these angles are in the interval from zero to two pi radians. I hope you found this helpful.